Uh, Liam Sheedy, we were saying at half time it was all sort of a bit pedestrian and hadn't kind of sparked into life. No fears of that in the second half. No, no fears of that in the second half. We got, we got what we expected. We got what we came for in that second half. Uh, the hurling came to a new level and it was needed, to be honest with you. As I said, we, we spoke about the lacklustre first half that we had. But both teams came out and came out fighting. I suppose, look, maybe the extra man uh, for Limerick forced Clare to just throw off the shackles, and they certainly did. You know, I think Davey learned a huge amount about his team. He's lost by a point today. Donal Donovan just didn't work for him in the corner. Keane Lynch had him in all sorts of trouble, and when he switched on to Graham McCahey, Graham McCahey picked off one one off him. I think likewise, you know, Gerard O'Connell, Shane Golden, and David Reedy never really brought anything to the game that he would have looked at. So, as Henry said earlier, he paid a heavy price for being missing some of his high profile players today. But I think the one shine that Aaron Cunningham came on and lit up the game. I mean, the two goals he, he, he struck were just outstanding. Standing off his hurley without breaking strike goals, you know. And really, as I said, they were very lucky. I mean, I don't think anyone could have any complaints if there was a draw at the end of the day. But sure. ultimately, Limerick, they'll gain serious momentum. They now get tip again. They've beaten them the last two years. They have them back in their own backyard again. I think the team that probably want, needed to win most today from, from their momentum point of view is Limerick because they've home draw now in the next day. So they'll go back to training now next week and they'll be mad looking forward to a Munster semi final because they've learned a lot about their team as well today. I have to say, Henry, for a long time there at the end, I thought we were heading back here again next Sunday. Yeah, it very much looked like it was going to be a draw. Um, but I think it's that's Limerick, you know. They're just, uh, even playing against them, they're a tough team. They're tough characters. Richie McCarthy, Gavin O'Mahony, all these players, they're tough. And they dug out the victory. They probably, I'm sure Teacher Ryan will reflect on it and say, we could have played a lot better. But mm -hmm. they won't matter now. They're looking forward to playing Tipperary, having a home, as Liam has said. And, uh, you know, I think this testament to the kind of character that's in the individuals and, and TJ and the management team as well, uh, that they did dig it out. But, uh, it could have went either way. We kind of said that at the beginning. Uh, and I think as well, when it reflected it, the first half was very nervous. But yeah. it was the first big championship match of hurling this yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, the first big championship match for all those players as well. So, and I think in the second half, it was just a lot more explosive. You know? I know, it did take a while to loosen up, and it sure did. From Clare's point of view, Cyril Farrell, you know, the last two big games that Clare have played, they've actually played well in them against Kilkenny and got relegated from Division 1 and here today. So... Their performances were good, but the results didn't go for them. Yeah, performance is fine, and they'll, they'll be happy enough with that, but that still won't count tonight in the sense that they're beaten again. They still haven't won a championship game. Like, that'll be in their heads. And, and as Liam said, a lot, of the sub, like, a lot of the new guys didn't work. Now, that can happen first day out. They did come alive in the second half, and when the game was gone from them, Aaron Cunningham brought them back in with two great goals. Like, and they came back in, and they showed what they can do. The only thing is, they'll be disappointed, they'll be gutted, there'll be a lot of stick going on in Clare. But, as we were saying before the game, talking beforehand, they'll all be training Tuesday night, Michael. Yes. They'll be waiting. Yes. No one will fancy meeting Clare in, in, you know, in, the, in the round. Manager TJ Ryan, he's talking to Clare McNamara. TJ, one point win, you'll take that? First round of the championship, yeah, absolutely delighted. Um, a lot of credit to our lads that dug in and tackles and hooks and blocks and, you know, pride and passion to show it in the finish, I thought was incredible. And just delighted for them and delighted for the backroom team. Thought they did a great job for the last number of weeks. And to get a championship win is brilliant. And today, to win in Turles, that's what it's all about, really. Should you have been further ahead after the first half with the breeze and the play a bit unstructured up front for you, maybe? Yeah, it probably took a bit of a while for the game to settle early on. Yeah. First half might not have been brilliant stuff to watch, but the, the breeze was quite strong and you're probably right. Probably could have been a few more points up. And, but it was difficult, difficult game to play in. You know, a lot of serious athletes on both sides there. You know, the, the, the defending and as I said, the hooking and blocking early on was incredible on both sides. And, you know, I said, just credit again to Orphal, it's just really dug it out. And a one point win in the first round and you've tried to build, build momentum from here. A number of disciplinary issues. Talk to us first about what happened at half time. Yeah, that was kind of in front of us. Look, I suppose, I'd say there's a lot of talking points through the whole lot of this game. I'd say tonight you could probably spend a good while talking about them. I, I'm not sure whether a lot of them are right or wrong. You know, I mean, the advantage rule was always going to cause, I say, a bit of conversation. Um, whether a lot of the calls were right or wrong at the end of the day, I suppose, you know, the referee's got a tough job to do as well. The pace of the game there at times in the second half was incredible and trying to keep up with it from his point of view, like he'd want eyes in the back of his head. Like, But look, from our point of view, the breaks went our way in the finish. Got a great score. Uh, John Fitzgibbon, huge score there in the finish and just really delighted to win the game. You finished with 14 as well with Sean Tobin. Yeah, I didn't see that one all right. Like, so just when a sub comes on, usually he probably gets welcome to the game. But look, I have to watch it later on. Like, he seemed to be fairly kind of gutted afterwards. Didn't think he did much. But look, that's the game of hurling, unfortunately. As the referee just can't get every single decision right. Whether that was right or wrong, I don't know. But look, we won by a point, and that's a huge positive that we can take from the game. Another positive, Keane Lynch, he caught the eye. Yeah, he's a real gem. Like, and he's been like that for a long time now. And you know, credit to the minor setup from the last number of years in Limerick. I mean, they're starting to produce players, and you know, have really quite and I, th I, th I think Keane is right up there at the very top. And uh, four weeks' time, tip in the Gaelic grounds? Yeah, 
it's a great match to look forward to. I suppose plans to begin in earnest for that tomorrow. But tonight, we'll enjoy this one to win a championship game, quarter final of much. <laughs> I know what it, it, no, it is. The, game, right, it, the way the game yeah. is, if, yeah. you're, if you lift yeah. the hurley now, yeah. you're in trouble. I would yeah. agree. OK, uh, I think we have the Clare manager, Davy Fitz. Uh, he's with Clare. Davy, uh, just a point short. Uh, just uh, tell us how you're feeling right now. Hard to take. Um, don't think we deserve to lose that. So, well done to Limerick. Hard to take in what, in what way? What's, what do you think it was? Clear, you're not going to draw me in it, and just well done to Limerick. Did you think that there should have been a bit more time added on there at the end? I have no comment to make in it. And, um, you have a look at all the facts, you'll see them. I, I have no comment to make, and that's it. And um, I'm very, very, very proud of the Clare team and the Clare supporters today. They absolutely were immense, so they are, and I'm not going to concentrate on anything else um, whatsoever. And um, I'm really proud of my team. Six points down. They showed some character, but I am 100% certain we did not deserve to lose that game. I'm 100% certain of that. What do you think cost you the game then? Oh, I won't go into that. I won't go into that. I'd say it's pretty easy if you analyse the stats of the game, you'll know why we lost the game. Did you think you were unfairly treated by the officials? No, I, listen, I'm not saying. Clear, I think it's very unfair to put me in that position. All I said is fair play to Limerick and well done. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting into that. I'm, I'm bitterly disappointed. I don't feel we deserve to lose that game, so I don't. You know, and. Um, I just my dress room inside, um, like the lads. No, I, I won't even go into it. It's, it's OK. Well done to Limerick and best of luck to them. Aaron Cunningham, you, you fought until the end. He was a great substitution, two goals. Yeah, he was he was phenomenal when he came on. But it's not that the lads, there was a lot of stuff questioned about us today and we were told, like, there was a lot of people that had written us off, even in our own county that wrote us off. And, these boys are phenomenal. These guys work so hard and, and that. And all we need is a fair break and we'll give any team a game for it on any day as we showed today. And I'm immensely proud. I'm immensely proud of this Clare team. And trust me, I'm there for a few more years and we'll keep coming back. We might get a beating or two, then all, but I'll tell you one thing, we'll keep coming back. And if we get a fair break, we'll be there thereabouts. But well done to Limerick today. Do you know what? I, the mind of talking points, the most important thing was the battle outside in the field. And the battle from Clare and Limerick there today, they absolutely gave every, everything. And I'm, I'm sure the neutrals really enjoyed the game, you know, and that's what hurling is about. Could you give us your view on that half-time uh, instant where your, your captain, Pat Donlan, was sent off? I, I didn't see it, um, so I didn't, you know. Um, tell you, Drew, it's, it's a tough enough one to take, you know. Um, so it is. Um, I'm sure Don Grady is fine inside or they're in the bother him, you know. And um, they could say the same. It was very harsh and their man was sent off as well. Like, it, like you've, it's 50-50. It's, it's a game of hurling. If there's someone badly injured, I can accept something that's, that's grand, you know. But it does have an outcome on the game as well when you have stuff like that, you know. Um, I don't know how many frees are in the game today or who got exactly how many and what the story is. But um, we need to just let, let the hurling go and let it flow away, you know. You've had a couple of red cards recently, though. Do you think discipline is a problem? Maybe it is for Clare, I don't know about anyone else, but maybe it is, I don't know. Um, I don't think we're a dirty team, that's for sure. Anyway, I'd be fairly certain of that, that we're not. Um, but um, I, I can't answer that one, Clare, you know. It's, um, I'm sure if you went back over the Championship last year and this year, I'm sure you will find a lot of similar incidents if you went back. But, listen, it was a great game today, and as we said, we're bitterly disappointed, but Limerick fought to nail as well, and you have to admire that. They're, they're battlers, but I love that. We stood up today and we matched them toe to toe, no problem. I do not think we deserve to lose that game. Okay, thank you, Davy. All right, Davy for sure there with uh, Claire McNamara. Uh, proud of his team, rightly so. Um, also uh, generous to Limerick uh, in their win, but certainly he alluded to it a couple of times. He's, he said at one stage, if you look at the stats from the game, they didn't deserve to lose it. Uh, he wouldn't be drawn any further than that, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out. <laughs> yeah. He's talking about the refereeing of the match. Yeah, and the stats, you can prove anything on stats. You know what I mean? Like the stats is, of course, like that, that Dolan got 11 points. Well, one was 65, and the other 10 from freeze and missed a few. But the point is, Michael, in Hurlan, if you're on the ball, the team that commits the fouls haven't the ball usually. It's, it's usually the opposition has it. It's like someone telling me about stats. I'm on Henry Shefflin. And the, Cody, Brian Cody was on to him and said, God, you, you had a great game. You had four blocks and three hooks. And someone says, what was the wing back done? You know what I mean? You have to have the ball. Limerick got the freeze. 
because they're on the ball. And as Liam said, the tackling is high, is high. It's deemed high, and that's the problem. It isn't a hurling. They're not a dirty team. They're a good hurling team. Neither a Limerick a dirty team. It, it opened up the second half, and it was very honest, and it was, it was a great... It was a great combat, but like the freeze are there, and the ref, like even in the red card, he, he wasn't wrong in the first one. Pat Donnan had to go, and that's what most like. But he knows himself he lost the cool. The second one with, for for Shawnee Tobin, I would think may not have came if the other one didn't come. But that's beside the point. But definitely, like the freeze came because Limerick had the ball and they were in possession. And if you, that's that's usually what happens. Okay, you might get pulled a little bit for overcarrying, but nine times out of ten, the guy with the ball will get the free. Okay, I just very briefly want to talk to you lads uh, about hurling elsewhere in the championship. Two results for you from. It's going to be easy in Munster this year. TJ Ryan said there there'll be a lot of talking points tonight. Do you think Don Lug, Davy Fitz has a point when he's saying, when he's suggesting they were robbed? Yeah, well, I think, look, he's bound to be, Dave, we all know what Davy's like. He's a, a very passionate man. It could be argued that sometimes the worst we do see the man is in front of the mic, you know. the uh, Anybody who will know him off the field would have a, a, a much different, maybe more positive view of him. He's putting so much into this thing, and when the game is so tight, you know, there's a lot of pressure there mm. and stuff like that. I think that it, the, possibly around the timekeeping, you would have a, a couple of question marks over. But other than that, look, I, I don't think that there was any more freeze given for Limerick in the round than there was uh, right. for, Lim for well, Clare. We'll look at it all, obviously, more later on. Michael Kavanagh, did Limerick deserve it? Yeah, I think overall probably it does. I think they probably led for the, the majority of the game there today. And I suppose in even the second half, they were six points ahead. They had a six-point lead as well. So I think, you know, discipline probably caught Clare as well a bit today. You know, another sending off. I think they're fourth in the last three championship games. But uh, Shane Dowling was unerring, I suppose, on his threes as well. And overall, I think... I think they did deserve it. Um, a great point at the end. Maybe if you had to go on a few minutes later, we might have got a draw of it, all right. Yeah, all right then. Well, I mean, it's a huge blow for, for Clare... I mean, they go with the backdoor route again. They were successful previously. What do you think of that? I'm not so sure about that, Des. I think that the, come to the end of the year, it mightn't be seen as much of a blow. I think that Clare would have liked to win down. They've got a, a terrible record in Munster yeah. over the last number of years. But, yeah. you know, there's, the way Clare play, they have a lot of players out. They'll have a, a lot of those guys coming back into it. And the more games they get through the back door will not do them any harm at all. All right, then, well, you're talking there about the way Clare play. Let's have a look at the systems and the way they set up today. Guide us through maybe Clare, first of all. Yeah, there's, there was a, a lot of talk about the, uh, the systems. I think both teams employed a sweeper. And if you look at it here, even in the, in the Limerick defence, the Clare players were playing in a, a lot around the middle of the field. And this was a very obvious tactic. Shane O'Donnell would leave his full forward position. And look at the yards he makes to get up into space. Good defence here by Limerick, not following the, the man that's trying to make the space, even though I would argue that Seamus Hickey should be probably out faster and covering that off. But that was really a tactic that was employed a lot by Clare today. Limerick set up something similar to I suppose. They played, um, they played um, inside there, they played one man inside a lot of the time. And I suppose when you're, when you're doing that, Des, you probably have to use the ball appropriately, you know, mm -hmm. and get the ball, work the ball into the right positions up the wings. And they didn't do that. Every time, look, lumping the ball high in, again, no one inside, you know. You need to be patient, work the ball in through the channels, probably something they didn't do. Clear again, working the ball out here in the second half, going along with the ball. When they probably should be trying to work that up the channels, up the wings. Again, you know, men are isolated inside, men back, extra men back all around them again. There's a proper way, I think, to try and get around the sweeper system. And like Mike was saying, I was surprised how much bad ball was being popped in. You need to go towards the wings and try and take the extra man out. That was good play we saw by Clare. And here, one of Limerick, Limerick actually lost a lot of their puck outs today, but when they hit six sharp puck outs, they actually only lost one of those. And if you are to go around the sweeper, you need to work up the channels because mm. it's logical that if you're striking the ball into where there's extra yeah. men, the odds are going to be against you that you're going to lose that ball. Yeah, yeah, and it probably ended up the game being very congested, very crowded around the middle in the first half and probably didn't get open or flown kind of hurling at all in the first half. You know, uh, Limerick deployed uh, Tom Condon kind of in the sweeper system, uh, cleared on the same with Patrick O'Connor and it was very kind of congested. But I suppose the only way of breaking that down is kind of mixing it up by going long maybe into the corners or by going short and working by good support play. Yeah, yeah. And, and at times that was done but I suppose it was only maybe in the second half and the sending off really maybe the game came to light right before half time and that sending off the second half really opened up and we got the, the fair I suppose we were looking forward to all yeah. year a well, good example of that is sorry for cutting across you was Limerick hit 28 puck outs and they last 11 in right okay the goals a couple of great goals today wasn't it yeah so look goals you know obviously goals win games 
looking at this here, right, I, you probably heard me talking about this a good few times. I think, you know, I'd be really disappointed with the, the clear defence here, right? You see, look, mm -hmm. everybody watching the ball, nobody watching the man. And, you know, the role of the defender there is to give the goalkeeper the space. And just to point it out, this happened again later on. Look at this, clear player not being tight on, on, on the Limerick player. And again, not protecting Patrick Kelly. If I was Patrick Kelly, and look, he's got one of the best goalkeepers of all time, coaching him in David Fitzgerald, I'd be working on that. You're, you're a cornerback, Michael. Yeah, well, they should be minding the square there, you know, and yeah. uh, I suppose that's the job of a cornerback or yeah. a fullback. But straight away, Claire went down the field, you know, Shane O'Donnell laid off Darren Cunningham here. And he showed great footwork here, great balance, shortened the hurl and a great finish yeah. out of him. You know, he's been doing that at under 21 age for the last number of years. He's, he's been a proven goal scorer at, at that age. And he's probably wondering why he didn't start, but I'm sure he's put his hand up. The second goal again, you know, talk about a great turn of foot, left Seamus yeah. Hickey in his wake, shortened the hurl, great strike in the top corner, give the keeper no chance. Fantastic score off the hurl. Great skill short there, Des. Wonderful finish, you know. Seamus Hickey tracking back, Richie McCarthy coming at him. He showed great composure, but he was doing that, yeah. I suppose, at under-21 level for a number of years. He's definitely put his hand up 2-1 when he came on today for, for inclusion from the start from it's the next day. It's great to see young fella just going for goal, isn't it, with pace and, yeah. and, and his head down. Great to see, yeah. and I, I think, you know, when forwards get into that position, we still don't see enough forwards actually going for the kill when they're true like that. And I wouldn't underestimate how hard it was for him to offload that strike. He even struck the ball on the pitch without letting it drop because he would have gotten blocked down otherwise. Yeah. Now the referee, as TJ said, he, he'd need eyes in the back of his head, but there were quite a few talking points. Take us through some of the main ones. Obviously the sendings off would be... Yeah, so the sending off, I suppose, were the, uh, the, the big ones. Clare were going grand in the first half, you know, and would have been happy enough. But here you see, don't look great at getting a couple of belts. Um, and look, the reality is, once you raise your hurley at all and you strike, and it, you know, it was done twice by Patrick Donlan. That was the second one there. You're asking for trouble. I, I, I thought Paddy O'Brien came in and hit him in the back and he turned and didn't know who, and he got that wrong. Not defending, but he did. Yeah, and there, like, there was a lot of, I suppose, you know, belts going in and stuff like that, but I don't think that you can defend it, Des, once you see a player lifting, lifting his... The uh, second one there like was Shawnee Tobin as well. Again, I'd say it was just rising the hurl, you know, he raised yeah. the hurl. If you had to just use his shoulder to jostle, but once the striking with the hurl, Des, I suppose you're playing the letter of the law. I suppose the advantage rule here again, you know, Keane Lynch could have been let go this time here. Again, this time he takes on Donald Donovan, you know, goes round him. Again, the advantage rule is a bit uh, inconsistent. He could have been let go there. Mm. Something could have come of that. Could have been yeah. a goal scoring chance. I suppose yeah. that's... It's going to be, I suppose, a talking point mm. all year. I think uh, this is the first game of it being trialled in the Championship. But I suppose there's a good bit of inconsistency around it. Certain refs let it go, certain refs kind of hold it up. But certainly there was opportunities there today where something could have came of, of, of chances and it wasn't let play out. Yeah. In, it's, the, in it, the tweets it, that came into us, Donald, one of the key things is the time at the end. That seems to have been what angered most people. Well. At yeah. the end of the match, there was, wasn't enough time played. Yeah, like there's, there's possibly an argument there, but I think if you went back and looked at the second, second half, it was actually a very free-flowing half, with the obvious exception of the sending off. Now, I think that took around a minute and a half. Cullum Lyons played a minute and 20 seconds, but also just before the end of the game, there was a bit of messing going on with a, a, a clear sub coming onto the field and it looked mm. as if he didn't have a slip or something like that. And that definitely delayed the game for another 70 or 80 seconds. So if Clare were complaining about the one minute, I think their argument would be justified. Would you agree with that, Michael? Yeah, definitely so. I think a minute was very short uh, in the second half. Um, I think, you know, there was probably six, seven subs as well in the second half, you know, the setting off. But I suppose yeah. we looked at the sending off and, and the time the ball came back into play as well. It was definitly over a minute and a half, as Don looks at. Okay. Um, so definitely, I think there might be, it might be grounds there for that, all right. And it might be one of the reasons why Davy might have been uh, upset at the end. All right, but let's not, let's not take from Limerick's win either and, and the quality of it. And in that, there were quality performance from both teams. You've picked out a couple of mm. uh, guys today, some who did more than you expect and some who maybe didn't. Yeah, well, look, there was a lot of big-name players here on, on view today, and Tony Kelly is one of those players, right? But he was man-marked on a number of occasions. When Clare are playing their own sweeper, it means that the likes of Tony Kelly is up against five and six men, and it allows the opposition to actually man-mark him and leave another covering defender behind. But you'd also have to say certain things didn't go right from either. You know, on another day, Tony Kelly would, you know, maybe hop that ball off the ground and, and put the ball over the bar. Mm. Here we actually see again an example of some really bad Limerick striking in the first half. And like I said, Clare would have been happy enough with the way they had performed. They set up very tactically. 
and Nita Shane O'Donnell to be leading the attack and would have been very happy going in at half time just to be a, a couple of points down. Yeah. You really like Shane O'Donnell's performance? Shane O'Donnell, mm. I, you know, it might surprise a lot of people, Des, right? But he actually, this was his first game since the 2013 all Ireland final when he, was, when he was outstanding that day. Yeah. Another guy had a great day today, Des, was, was Keane Lynch, you know, starting off uh, on his debut. He was absolutely brilliant. He's shown for the ball, great composure for a guy just straight out of minor. You know, the bloodline is good. He's a nephew of Kieran Carey, but a uh, great ball across. But he wasn't, he wasn't afraid to try anything today, you know. Mm. I'm not sure I'd like a Conor forward trying that on me when I was playing Conor back, but this guy, you know, was full of, full of confidence, you know, mm. full of swagger for, for a young guy. Um, he really, he really had a great game, you know, and showed off all great skills out throughout today. A great hand pass again by Graham. He was shown for the ball. He gave Donald Donovan a torrid time there today and ended up scoring three points as well. Mm -hmm. So he can be very pleased and he's first day out when I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of him. All right, a good then. sign of him there, Des. He took a, a, a good knock into the head there when he was catching mm -hmm. that ball but still had the, the composure and the, the toughness to catch the ball and, the and reverse off pass, before yeah, he uh, yeah. went rubbing his head. Well, does he feature then in our nominees for Man of the Match? Yeah, he does he indeed. Does, uh, so there's the, uh, the, the, the three people in contention are Shane, Shane O'Donnell, had a really tough job leading the line by himself and probably plays that role better than anyone else yeah. in the country could do. And I think all hurling people were delighted to see him back today. Yeah. The aforementioned Cian Lynch, Michael has spoken about him. And I think Shane Dowling today played an important role. He did miss a couple of frees, but he also hit some really important ones and he got into the double digits from a, a points tally. Okay. So who gets the award then, Michael? Yeah, we decided to go with uh, Keane Lynch uh, as a worthy recipient. You know. Definitely on that, I suppose. A guy making his, his debut today, I suppose, straight out of the minor ranks, you know, yeah. the Patrick's well man, coming from a very good bloodline, but, uh, you know, very good underage career, very good school, college minor career, and uh, it was a talent that was earmarked, uh, but he really stepped up to the stage today, you know, gave Donald Donovan a very tough time they had to move David McInerney over to him on the second half with three points from him today, but he showed an array of skills, and uh, he's definitely a one, I suppose. In a year last year where we, we lost a lot of top marquee forwards, like yeah. Swan Kelly, Henry Sheffield, it's great to have some new young blood coming up, to, stepping up, and uh, yeah, he's right. one we'll cer certainly be looking forward to seeing a lot more in his career. All right, then, well, congratulations to Key, and then let's hear from, he spoke with Claire after the game. Keane, congratulations, a fantastic debut. You looked very much at home out there. She's tireless to feel the legends, like, it's where you dream of playing, Do you know, right from 14s, 15s, it's a dream come true, like. Do you know, you've seen players come before you playing with the likes of Donald O'Grady out there, like, do you, know, you can't, you only dream about it, but going out there today and seeing what happened, it's brilliant, like. There was a lot of talk about your pedigree in the build-up to this one. Uh, your uncle is Kieran Carey, of course. Do you have any advice for you? Oh, I really called down this morning now as I was going to Mass, so he gave me a few quick words, but Kieran's great. All the uncles are brilliant, like, they come across advice, and she look, thank God it paid off there today. And you've got tips to look forward to now at home? Yeah, we knew today wasn't going to be easy either, and tip is going to be another battle, like, in Gaelic rounds, I know. Home advantage, but it still makes no difference. Like, we'll have to go out and bring our A game again, and we'll expect the best from Tipperary. Well, Keen, congratulations. You are the Etihad Airways RTE Man of the Match, and Louise Wheatley from Etihad is here to make the presentation. Yeah, well done to Keen. Now, it was also a very busy weekend.